The situation is simple. If Sharky get relegated this season, they'll have to start again as an amateur club and build their way back up to the top of German professional football as a Phoenix club. That's thanks to over 150 million pounds of debt, meaning they won't be able to afford a third tier license. That brings us here to current day where at the time of recording, they're sitting in 14th spot, just hovering above the relegation zone, but they are definitely in a scrap. From top division and even a Champions League stage, staple couple years back to now fighting for their lives and fighting for club survival. So today I want to take over the club and focus on what they do best. Bring in a new crop of rising ballers from their ever-present talent factory with a character at the helm that's recently been fired. Yes, the one and only special one, Jose Mourinho. COVID absolutely destroying their finances and taking losses on players they should have sold for tens of millions. The only way we can improve this starting roster is by recruiting players through the youth academy and that's going to come in the form of either our initial given youth academy once we've started up the save so any of these nine players or whoever our scouts can dig up and sign for us either in-house with some homegrown talents or overseas considering our limited budget I mean the club are already in millions of pounds of debt but we've only been given seven million pounds to start off with spending already nearly two million pounds on the youth scouting network yeah we better hope these scouts bring back a couple gems otherwise I'm gonna feel scammed and this is going to be a whole lot tougher than I thought. I'm just going to say the team needs improvement all over the park. Ew, brother, ew. What's that? What's that, brother? But the one shining light, the one diamond in the rough, it's got to be one of their own products, Owe Draogo. I've made him the captain at only 17. The teenager's showing great potential and I'm looking to build the entire squad around him. I want him to be the core. As for any other players we can keep, it's pretty much anyone under 21 and that only includes like five players. So this whole <laughs> roster is going to need a revamp. How the hell is this guy valued zero? I've never seen that before. Market value of nothing. Thing. I've got the same market value as this bloke. Bro, they're just out here disrespecting you. I'd hate to be their financial board right now. This would be a nightmare. First look at our youth academy and the first players we can sign up to this new era at Schalke under Mourinho. I'm probably going to have a case to sign every single one of them and give them a chance. So Javier Romain looks like a decent box-to-box -box center midfielder. 73 to 94 potential. Four-star, four-star. We're just going to promote them to the senior team and give them a shot. Potentially loan them out. They're long-term investments and when you get gifted with an Italian stallion called Sergio Ferrari. That is a one-way ticket into the senior squad. Five-star week for already. 74 to 94 potential. Welcome, son. We've gotten a Kiwi striker, 68 to 94 potential. A big, big range there. But I'm willing to give the man from New Zealand a shot alongside Ollie Draper from down under. Five-star skill move, 71 to 94 potential. A five-foot-six. Can I give him that small forward energy? We will keep an eye on him. Welcome to the Veltons Arena, my guy, Rodri Griffith. Hailing from America, too young to be promoted yet, so we'll keep him in the academy cooking. Meanwhile, the Argentine Marco Perea, CDM slash center mid, looks like a defensive prospect. That's exactly what this team needs, a bit of physical presence, a solid figure that's going to provide the club with a bit of stability, and Igo Borges also brings that in spades. Four-star skills, three-star weak foot, 81 to 94 potential, and 16, 56 overall. Welcome through. Paul Peters has arrived with a bloody mop on his head, but I'll take him. The Belgian left winger, 16, 72 to 94 potential, five-star weak foot already. And with those kind of physical attributes, he is going to be a problem for defenders worldwide. And then dig it off. Lucky last, we have got Shevchenko's son, Ruslan. Oh my God, this guy's 14, 78 to 94 potential. I forgot we had the realism mod on where you can get players even younger. We're going to have to wait a little bit to get these guys promoted. But for now, they'll be slaving away in the academy. And now, obviously, before we start signing anyone up and joining them into our first team, we've got to ship this deadwood out the door and trust me that is coming in bucket loads this team is changing by the minutes it's out with the old in with the new because all the players we're selling are above the age of 30 besides this guy 26 but you get the picture we're trying to reshape this club for the long term and don't worry Mourinho has a plan the special one he's going against the grain and he's doing something he's never done before we're gonna pretty much take all the money we make from these player sales and reinvest it back into our youth setup and scouting the 
Royal Blues are going to focus on what they do best. Whilst also trying to survive in the second tier because this is going to be a wake up call. Yeah, a lot of senior first team players leaving. We might be getting hit with a reality check. I want to say that you guys saw this coming, but come on, these players aren't doing the job in real life. Are they going to do the job in career mode? Probably not. Now we have to go make some assets on our own. Now after the first few months of scouting for players in season one, we were able to send one scout to Germany. I was initially going to do two, but the game doesn't allow you to send a two two scouts to the same country so I had to switch it up and go Colombia and Bulgaria we've received pretty much all of the scout reports back and here are the main highlights now filling our academy up to the brim with 16 the max amount you can have and let's just say we were lacking some goalkeeper talent so it looks like we've got a fair share of three which is exactly what we need Eduardo Jaramillo 17 goalkeeping shot stopper 6 foot 4 and has 93 potential on the dot I've turned on the mod that just makes sure it gives us a specific potential potential so I don't have to wonder between a wide range. We're promoting him straight to the senior team. It looks like Grigor Hirstrov from Bulgaria will be a nice backup but he's still only 15 which is annoying. So for the time being we're gonna have to rely on his fellow countryman Fran Salas. 16, 86 potential 6 foot 3 and he's going to be a perfect backup in the second tier. Now moving on to defenders. Our defensive department we're playing with that 3 man back line and I'm looking to recruit some new units back there. 6 foot 3 Felix Keller can also play at left back he's 17 88 potential and already has some physical attributes to boast about so we're going to promote him straight away it's a no-brainer considering we're running low on these positions another center back slash left back age 16 jacob mayer from germany 87 potential fits the homegrown quota and now these two colombians we've got felix montero 89 potential only five foot nine which worries me he won't be winning too many aerial duels and headers but for now we're just going to promote him and the best defensive talent we've been able to find Danny Rayner from Colombia. Not only can he play at center back and right back, he can also do a shift at CDM. Six foot one. He's just an absolute warrior already with such consistent stats. 98 potential, which is out of this world. Even though he's only 49 overall, 16, 97 potential. Modest collar looks very promising. Five foot eight, five star, five star. And even though we don't play with right backs, he has the potential to be converted into another position or just be converted into a center half. Theo Braun has got decent potential, but only so. 37 overall, like, uh, he's not getting a game. The next two talents I'm interested in promoting are two Germans, and it's Liam Klobberlang at 6 foot 5. He's the perfect target forward, and he could be an extreme attacking threat. I love this German vibe we got going on. We're bringing back their homegrown roots, Nicholas Mayer. He looks like a little bit of a dynamo. Right mid, left wing, center mid, has potential of 96, 5 foot 9. He's giving me, like, the German Eden Hazard type vibes. Maybe the next Leroy Sane. Another no-brainer. We're promoting him straight away and for the rest of them they're either not old enough to be promoted or not good enough so that's gonna do it for signings in season one there we have it our starting 11 is looking a little bit like this for the first youth academy campaign we've done enough where we pretty much have a youth academy play in every single position and even the bench is fully youth academy only in our debut stint we all know the main objective it's all about survival so fingers crossed we don't get this club extinct now we fit about halfway through the season january transfer deadline day and I thought you know what we might as well get some last minute deals over the line considering we've released a few players we've got a shorter squad size we might need some backup and thanks to another scouting adventure we've pursued I've gone to Turkey I don't know how I missed them or why I didn't choose them in the beginning Schalke and German football in general just have a affinity or a connection with Turkish wonder kids and players and these aren't even the talents I'm considering calling up these are just the ones we've rejected and now for the new recruits we're looking to bring to the first team we've got Grigor Haris of. The Bulgarians finally turned 16, so we get a third string keeper. Thanks to mods, I've gone in the back end and changed the minimum age for promotion. I probably should have done that at the start, but finally, we can promote Ruslan Shevchenko, the Ukrainian winger who can play on either side, 90 potential, 5 foot 8, and my boy could be a star boy for the Schalke outfit in future. Now it's time for the Turkish talents, Umut Yilmaz, Ali Demir, and Uzman Bulut. And we need to shine a light on the next gen of Turkish players and Youth Academy one kids coming through. Omar, another bullet. We've got the Bullet Brothers. This guy, 94 potential. 16 right mid cam and center mid. I love their just diversity and the versatility. And we've still got some more I wanted to just leave in until season two to see how they progress. But another option at center forward I'm considering is Lenny Schneider. Homegrown German, 16 center forward slash striker. Six foot one, 95 potential. I'm sure he can become a robust super sub. Meanwhile, for the rest of them, they've still got some improvement. 
moving to do and hopefully they don't throw a tantrum and leave the academy we've still got to sell them the dream we've drawn the curtain on our debut season and we only had one main mission at this campaign and that was to stay up and the boys have come through 13th spot quite similar to how they're doing it in real life to be honest but they beat the drop literally by what the one point away from being in that relegation playoff 16th they clutched up meaning that Schalke can now exist for at least for one more season in the DFB Pokal they didn't make it that far getting eliminated in round one to Magenberg 2-1 damn bro we would have had to face Borussia Dortmund's academy team that would have been a storyline and a half a little bit of a, a derby to see who goes down and who goes up we got here with a couple of injuries towards the end of the season thanks to the injury list feature being added back into my game I got Borges has been out for a couple of months and Liam Lang is Tawny's groin. That didn't do much to the three leaguer though as our main top goal scorer was Keke Top. He's an in real life Schalke talent and at 20 years of age he's gone up a major plus 10. 16 goals and one assist, consistent game time, consistent results and Asan Oedrogo. That is a mouthful to say. I'm just going to call him Asan for now but 23 goal contributions. He is the beating heart and soul of this team. The Royal Blues have got a real gem on their hands. Liam Lang up front, 10 goals and one assist for the 18 year old. A decent start to life here at the Veltons Arena. And even though Umut Ilmaz got implemented halfway through the season, it was four goals off the bench in eight appearances for the Turkish talent. We also had the Argentine Marco Pereira running the show in midfield at CDM. Two goals and two assists. An absolutely unbelievable plus nine. We've seen just rapid growth and development. That's thanks to them being in the second tiers. Danny Reina, one goal from centre back. He's been our main defensive unit. Borges before the injury was doing well. One goal and four from deep. And poor Peters. I mean, he wins awards for that fresh cut, but the Belgian with one goal and one off the bench, Montero, a plus nine, and again, the just upgrades and overall growth and development of this team has been nothing short of insane. Considering the toxic environment off the pitch and all the financial troubles, the lads have banded together and by one point have saved the club from going under. Also, I forgot to mention that we did loan out a couple of players, or a one, Ollie Draper, the academy talent we got gifted with. The Aussie is out on loan at pretty much the worst team in the game, UCD Dublin, so he should be scoring goals for fun. But now, though, Mourinho Schalke are gonna keep a pushing as we're slowly building towards something special. Who knows? Maybe we can go for a promotion push for season two. I didn't check. Oh man, I didn't check our youth academy. We might have some of our players who have left. That would be an absolute disaster. Let's check in, and we still have nine players. I think that's what we left with. Okay, okay, I'm gonna keep calm because it's crisis averted. So in season two, it is no secret that we're still on struggle street. We're gonna keep this youth development cycle going. Gotta have a good structure set in place. So basically I've just loaned out all the players that aren't good enough to crack into the first team and get some solid minutes under their belt. We have the likes of some Germans, some Turks, and the sole Italian stallion Ferrari. They all still have points to prove and could be key pieces of the puzzle. Now when it comes to our youth scouts this season, we set them up with all new projects. We've got one out in Germany, one out in Turkey again, just to keep that synergy going. And then just a wild card, we've got Carol Toman out at Korea. And with those scout reports, there weren't really much special besides Yong Soo Choi, a very interesting prospect here who can play at center back, left back, center mid, 90 potential. He is six foot tall and just a versatile king. So that is just a one way ticket into the first team. Ramazan Kaya from Turkey, the 15 year old shot stopper. It's already 64 overall, 62 rated and has a 95 potential. He's got something special about him and he's going to be a brilliant second string keeper. And again, these Korean talents have impressed me the most with Yi Jun Shin, another option at striker. I mean, we've got so many to choose from. He's just going to add to our collection, still at only 15, 91 potential, and he could be a surprise package I don't want to regret. And now here are two outside shots that I've seen improvement and rapid growth over the off season. We've got the homegrown Johannes Bender, and I mean, just for the name alone, the Colombian Ricardo Bustamante. I'm just infatuated by that last name. It would be rude of me not to promote him into the first squad. Yeah, everything about him just sounds spicy. A CDM slash center mid can provide some perfect backup. He's got that Colombian bulldog type energy about him. So he's getting his first promotion into the senior squad. And Johannes Bender, I'm going to promote him, but most likely loan him out. As for the rest of them, let's see how this second season treats them. The youth base talents are on the prowl. Still on the hunt to bring the Royal Blues back to their former glory. And the team pretty much stays the same. The trident of Shin, Maya and Peters to come off the bench and make an impact look delightful. And with some decent defensive coverage, I could see us push
push for a promotion battle, I'm hopeful that we're laying the foundations of a future German powerhouse. Now, thanks to my amateur level management skills and our loan system that has pretty much insured a whole crop of players away from the club, we have no reserves whatsoever. So if one player gets injured or suspended, we're going to be forced to forfeit every game. Hey, I don't make the rules, so I'm going to have to go on another youth academy promoting tirade halfway through the season. A few players who are ready for the step up and the leap into the first team. Leo Schneider is definitely a player I've been keeping my eye on. A backup for Odrobago in the middle of the pitch. And at Cam center forward is going to be our second string attacking midfielder. We just need to inject some depth into this side. 95 to 94 potential. Next up on the plate is the Yilmaz duo. We've got Kadir Yilmaz, the Turkish 18 year old. Can play right wing, left mid, center mid. We love the versatility. And of course, we have Umut Yilmaz. Pretty much twin brothers. 82 to 92 potential. Another backup attacking midfielder. The classic creative number 10. Absolute character right here with this glorious man bun. It's Robert Bender. He's already 17, 90 to 94 potential, 5 foot 8, a right winger. The last name is just the cherry on top. We love the Benders. So he's getting his long awaited call up. We don't really need any goalkeepers anymore. So I'm sorry, Chunso O. Oh. You would have been a player of the streets, don't forget. And the same goes for Justice Schumacher. I swear, the worst players always have the best names. As for the rest of them, we're going to give them a little bit more time for them to adjust and hopefully prove themselves the next time we have a youth day call up. Now this always usually has a good connotation. We've got the player of the season awards and the cutscene is telling us that our hitman Liam Lang up front, he's not only won the golden boot, but also the MVP. Our homegrown goal scoring threat is looking like he's going to have one stellar career. Here's how we finished off season two, and we've lost out an automatic promotion by two points, finishing third, and that means you know what it is, Bundesliga playoffs, or at least the relegation playoffs as Bosham and Heidenheim get back up to the first tier. 54 points is nothing to laugh at, and you can definitely see the telling signs are there, as we'll nowhere to be seen in the DFB Pokal. Round one elimination again to Heidenheim 2-0. And now the Bundesliga relegation playoffs Playoffs. That's the wrong one. I don't want those. Oh my god. You literally got to see it to believe it. How have we fumbled that? Not only was it 3-3 on aggregate, but we ended up losing out in the most heartbreaking way possible on pens. 5-4. Verda Bremen, man. That's it. Agenda set. We're coming for you. Like, it feels illegal having an 81 rated player in the second tier. Don't worry, lads. I, I'm well assured that we, they, they're angry, all right, but I'm assured we are going to walk the league next year. Don't you worry about that as our top goal scorer Liam Lang of course at 19. He's grown a plus 8. His connection up front with Keke Top is absolutely astonishing. Over 40 goals between them. 14 and 2 for the 21 year old. Iga Borges from deep. At CDM 9 goals and 10. We've got Nicholas Meyer on the right hand side with 4 goals. And the man who I feel guilty having in this side, he's not really performing to those kind of standards. Only 3 goals and 10 assists for Asan the captain. Shin off the bench proving to be a perfect super sub. 3 goals for the South Korean and Paul Peters coming through with three goals and one another impact sub that we've used and Ruslan Shevchenko two goals and three assists for the Ukrainian 17 year old now we have to check in on one of our biggest loan projects to date and ladies and gentlemen I think the youth academy loan glitch is back we are so back because look at some of this growth right here we've got Oli Draper with a plus four you've got some of your expected growth but then Omer Bullet at Harrogate Town plus 11 Lenny Schneider plus 11 there is going to be so much competition again. Osman Bullet. The Bullet brothers are out here firing on all cylinders. Moritz Kola. It looks like we're going to have another complete center back. Plus 11 for him out in the three league. Again, we've got both ends of the spectrum here. We've got the plus 10 double digits and then only a plus one for Riley Adams. Ricardo Bustamante plus 15 in Saudi Arabia. What are they feeding these guys? Ali Demir plus four. Javier Roman the Bol Bolivian plus 11. Oh my days. And Yen Ben, oh my, this is not a joke, people. What is going on? This is beyond my wildest dreams, beyond my wildest comprehension. Schalke's Academy products, at least when they're away from the club, are on God mode. They're locking in plus 19 for Johannes Bender. Now standing at a 67 overall, and this has been one of the most successful loan campaigns I have ever seen in a season. Hey, Mourinho might have fumbled the bag this time, but Germany ain't ready for season three. These Academy prospects are on 
on their way to becoming icons. I can just feel it. What did I say? I mean, you could see it from a mile away, but we're Bundesliga bound. The prophecy has come true, and the Schalke boys are back up in the big time where they belong, and the Royal Blues will be celebrating this one for a while. Let the promotion party commence. Mourinho and the gang are doing what they're doing, and now it's time for us to really cause some mayhem. Oh my days. I mean, I said they would walk the league, but invincible? 96 points? That's got to be some kind of Bundesliga 2 record. And they have got their heads held up high as Hertha Berlin took out the second promotion spot. You know, this save is crazy when Hertha got relegated, but we've got Hanover in the relegation playoffs. We don't really tend to fare well in the DFB Pokal, and that's exactly the same reach in the furthest we've ever gone. Round 3, knocked out 1-0 to Cologne. Oh, I completely forgot to check in on the Youth Academy while simulating. A couple of the players terminated their contracts, so I'm just going to call up Mahmoud Sadik, the 17-year-old Turkish defender, 86 to 92 potential. That's going to feel like a brand new signing in the Bundesliga. And it looks like this squadron has been juiced up to the gills. Season 3 has provided for some thrills and spills, but the promotion protagonists were as follows. Liam Lang, since day one, has been slotting them in for fun. He's got goal-scoring vibes running through his veins. 35 goals, 4 assists, a plus 7, 85 overall at 20. Yeah, these lads are special as Asan Ore Drago with 15 and 15. Proving the doubt is wrong with 30 goal contributions, 10 goals for Keke Top. Underwhelming numbers for him as Lang is stealing the show. Jacob Meyer from center back, 10 goals. Oh boy, they were out here bullying opponents because Igor Borges, the commander from midfield, 9 goals and 12. We've got Shin off the bench with 8 goals and Paul Peters, the Belgian on the left with 4. Yongsu Choi had a breakout campaign, plus 9. Javier Roman back in the side and back in the first team, 2 goals and 3 for the Bolivian. And Felix Montero from the back getting himself 2 goals. 12 assists is quite impressive for Ruslan Shevchenko, who was up there in our top 3 assist playmakers. 3 campaigns in the second tier and it has been an absolute cheat code as we take a look at some of the growth out on loan. Robert Bender, plus 14 over at Mansfield Town. Ristov doing well at Pisa. We've got Leo... What? <laughs> okay, Leo Schneider plus 22 at... Where is he? SSV Ulm. What have they got in the water over there? But this loan deal glitch, forget the realism mod. The FC24 career mode code. There is something I I'm quite not getting. Like they, they see the vision clearly with both Yilmaz's going up plus 17, plus 19 at Cosenza. Ferrari only with a plus 2. Our Italian stallion who has the best name just isn't getting this love. But for everyone else, it has been crazy for their development. And we've got Modric Kolo who's actually coming back from a two-year loan spell. That's going to feel like a brand new signing. We're going to have Johannes Bender back competing for time in the first team. The bold 17-year-old plus 8 for him out in Turkey. And oh, some more midfield depth with Bustamante returning from Saudi Arabia. Man, forget... Whoa, Yarmarillo, man. This Colombian shot stopper. Plus 11. Like, this is absolutely mind-boggling. If this is the first Youth Academy rebuild I've done, I should do these more often. They're so overpowered right now, and this squad could potentially even push for Europe. Forget a relegation battle. Can the flat-track bullies of the second division do it up in the Bundesliga? You can bet your bottom dollar, because they have deserved this. Ready to cause chaos and uproot the establishment. This party has only just begun. Now we do have some of you regular casualties that are sent out on our loan conveyor belt. I feel like Chelsea right now, back when they used to send out like 20 players on loan every season. We've kind of just become the Chelsea of Germany. However, that's probably their last chance to really prove themselves as they're more on the fringes of the squad. A 36-man roster. And finally now, after four seasons, we can showcase our depth with our first starting team sheet and then the backup brigade. The second team and just other the players and other options we have. It's not the best, but it's a decent starting point. And it's just there to reassure us that we've got enough talent on the roster. There are always going to be some obvious flaws with the team, but who knows? If they get a decent run of form together and they can adjust to the top flight quickly, the sky's the limit. For the first time in what feels like forever, our academy is currently empty. I'm entrusting this team with my life. It's all or nothing. Damn! Talk about back with a bang. In our first season returning, it has been a run is up finished second place only five points behind the obvious league winners Bayern finishing above Dortmund at the first time of asking so the fans are happy we had to suffer through a few growing pain type of seasons but that were crucial in our arc towards the top as it was Cologne and Mainz getting relegated Hertha back in the relegation promotion playoff and then the DFB Pokal will knocked out in round three just like last time out 
to Leipzig. And how could I forget we've skipped past both the Europa Conference League and the Europa League because we don't have time for that baby. The Royal Blues of Schalke are going straight to the Champions League where Inter won 2-1 against Arsenal and the Gunners continue to bottle titles left, right and centre. But that'll be the true test to see if this squad can compete on multiple fronts, make a debut in Europe. But for now though, we're going to take a look back at the season that was in campaign number four, our top goal scorer four years running now, Liam Lang. Double L coming through with 31 goals, eight assists, Johannes Bender. The lone fraud allegations were coming his way, but in the top flight, 11 goals and four assists. We've got Keke top up front, only seven goals and one, but he's still a valuable team member. And our Bolivian box-to-box -box midfielder, Javier Roman with six and four. We've got Asan Oa Drago, the club captain, five goals and 11, now at an 88. Danny Reina, 92 overall. The defender with four goals and two. Yejun Shin off the bench with four goals. And Ruslan Shevchenko was expecting more, but he did have an injury riddled season. Picked up a couple long-term injuries and the Ukrainian couldn't get going, but Igor Borges with two goals and 13 assists to be our number one playmaker. He chalked up some career best numbers to see Igor take home the player of the month award for May. And it's our favorite part of the career wrap up. How was our loan report? We've had Umut Ilmaz with a plus 14. Leo Schneider looks like he's first team ready. We're bound for Europe and Caddy Yilmaz wants a piece of it. He could be a perfect weapon on the right hand side. A lot of these guys again are going to feel like brand new signings. Returning five, sometimes even ten times the player they were. A plus 13 to report about for Mahmoud Sadik. And these Turkish Academy talents are making a low key comeback in this video. I wasn't expecting it but the team might look a little bit different. Next time out as all oh my days. What is going on at Darmstadt? Because I've seen the loan glitch before but at this level, well I've seriously got to consider what I've created here. I feel like Oppenheimer right now. Have I just created the next super team? The Veltons Arena will welcome back European football for the first time in over a decade and I can already hear the Champions League anthem being blasted on the speakers. Half a decade through the process, this youth academy bunch might be up there in the Hall of Fame by the time we're done. Now despite our Champions League credentials, we've still got to keep this loan system out, put chugging along. We've got a couple players that have still been with us from season one like Perea, Ferrari, Oli Draper. Some of them getting their fourth and fifth shots of glory as they're deemed a surplus to requirements. We have got pretty much two team sheets that should be capable of competing and challenging on multiple fronts. Now we've got a little bit of a different front too here with Lang keeping his starting spot and instead of going for two tall forwards up front because both of these two, Top and Lang, were six foot four and six foot five. I've decided to mix it up and throw Schneider in the mix. He's currently five foot seven. For the time being, we're training him into a center forward, which is only going to take two more months. It's going to provide a bit more depth and dynamic attributes to our attack. And he has potential to be special, so I'm all for it. We're back in amongst it for the top tier competition in Europe. Schalke drawn out of the hat. We've been drawn into Group G alongside Milan, PSV and Galatasaray. Sure that's a straightforward group. We shouldn't have any problems there. The young guns are still on their main quest of finding a first piece of silverware, proper piece of silverware, to solidify their credentials and really put their name on the map. That centre forward position conversion has worked wonders for Leo Schneider. So let's go ahead and see if there's any big upgrades to come through. No, it's kind of anticlimactic, but I think it'll do a job nonetheless. You know when you see a cutscene at the end of the simulation, you've done something right, not only in the second tier, but the first tier, Liam Lang, is dominating on all fronts. He's a top tier goal scorer. The German Haaland has just walked into the room. And the player of the season awards just keep piling up. And off with the player of the season awards. We've got a trophy bus parade to report on. And we're showcasing a piece of silverware. It's the Bundesliga. At the second time of asking, the Schalke young boys have come through and become German champions. Reigning supreme over Deutschland. And they're the best in the land. Back on top and back dominating. This once staple of the Bundesliga is now returned to their former glory. How did they do it though? With a 10 point gap over second place, what happened to Bayern this year? There was what? Borussia Dortmund, Leverkusen, Leipzig, all lagging behind and Schalke have set the new standard. 78 points, only four defeats all season. 73 goals scored. We had one of the best attacks in the league, the best defense by far. And that is a major honor to add to the trophy cabinet. In terms of the other competitions, the DFB Pokal, again, the German Cup, we just can't get past the round three. Eliminated at this stage three years in a row against Wolfsburg on penalties this time after it finished 1-1. For their Champions League debut, first time on the continent,
Continental seen 13 points, topped Group G, and in the round of 16 came up against Juventus, where they were eliminated 4-2 on aggregate. A bit of a harsh draw after they finished top, but it is what it is. They got their first little taste as Inter go back to back with a 2-1 win over PSG in the big dance. They seem to be the ones to beat. It looks like we've got league football down pat. It's just in terms of the cups. We haven't even had one little cheeky run so far. It's low-key kind of worrying me. I want another piece of silverware in us before we go all the way. But that's just nitpicking. Let's take a look at our best performers and goals and assists wise. Liam Lang again. Golden boot in the first and second tier. That's something to be commended for. 46 goal contributions. He's the poster boy. Our homegrown heavy hitter as the Turk. Caddy Yilmaz upon his return to the senior team. 15 goals and one assist in the top flight. We've got Leo Schneider newly converted to a center forward. He can do them both. He's setting up goals and he's scoring them. 23 goal contributions. The only player in the side to secure double figures in both departments as Asan Odraogo. We've managed to hold on to him and force him to stay loyal to the Royal Blues with five goals and 14 assists. Our number one playmaker coming from the Schalke talent factory. Lenny Schneider off the bench with five goals and one. Johannes Bender with three and five as he took over on the left. We had our boy Keke Top relegated to a super sub with two goals in off the bench. And Danny Reyna. Look at this guy. An absolute menace. Six foot one center back. Now with a 96 overall. These Colombians are just built different, man. I've never ever seen that before. Half a billion pound value coming through with a 589.5 million pound price tag. That is record breaking numbers there. Even Bender with 300 million. Schalke just know how to do it. They know how to rise the next crop of big generational superstars onto the scene. As Osman Bullet, we sent him out on loan and all of a sudden he's become our best midfielder. I've got the loan report. Plus 11 for the 20 year old Turkish talent at Napoli. As the grind continues, maybe one of them can return back in season six and cement a spot in the starting team. But he was our biggest grower. We've got another quality center back returning, Mahmoud Sadik. He'll be a solid reinforcement in that back three. As for the rest of them, nothing much to really get excited about, including Marco Perea, who I thought was going to be our long-term future captain, but he's just fallen off a cliff since like season two. Nevertheless, you've got to take the good with the bad. We're up right now, and I don't think winning the league would be that easy. So what I want to do, I want to set the standard. Let's go back to back, whilst also pushing for like a quarterfinals Champions League berth. As we put the building blocks in place for season six, now it's looking like it's all starting to come together. And this right here is one of my favorite part about these rebuilds is not only only that you can see our impact on club level but on the international scene with most of our first team being called up to their respected nations for of course the 2028 Euros and even though none of our players made it to the final Germany made it all the way through to the semis knocked out to Portugal 3-1 but you can see that the Schalke lads are out there doing their thing and you've got to be having a laugh if you don't think I'm calling back the boy bullet Osman at Napoli has been injected with something and the 21 year old is going to instantly become our best centre mid Fielder. If we want to make any splashes in Europe, it's a no-brainer. He's returning to the Veltons Arena as a new man, an exciting prospect, and at only 21, he is going to be a complete game-changer. He just slots right in. He's an instant upgrade on Roman, as much as I love him. You just know that him and Borges, the double Bs, are going to tear it up in midfield. Now, hear me out on this one. I know it's only been six seasons, but this Schalke squad already have the chance to go down in the history books and do something out of this world. World, as they've not only made it to one, but two major cup finals. And yes, that includes the Champions League. Before we take a look at those though, we've got to check in on the Bundesliga. And they managed to go back to back in even more emphatic fashion with only 18 goals conceded all season. They're showing shades of that prime Chelsea Jose Mourinho team with 96 goals, 85 points, only three losses all season. And you can see where we capitalized because Leverkusen only lost three, but all those draws made them just straight up out of the title race. In 2029, Bayern finishing down in 10th. Yeah, they must still have Harry Kane on the team. Absolutely incredible stuff right there, but back-to-back -back German champions, and they take home the German Super Cup. You love to see it in a 4-1 win over Wolfsburg to launch season six on the best foot forward, and that means the quadruple is on the line, people. We're gonna watch two major cup finals go down, and if not, the treble can be acquired, but over in the continental scene, it was Group H drawn in with Liverpool, Sevilla and Porto but again finished undefeated with 14 points, qualifying for the round of 16 and absolutely slapped up Monaco 8-2 on aggregate. We sent the French packing, we also took down Real Madrid, a team who's had a stranglehold on this competition ever since its inception and then in the semi-final 
Cardinals. We took one of their best players off him. We recalled Bullet back from his loan spell and it paid in dividends. As in the semis, we booked our place with a 7-2 aggregate win over Napoli. Just a different golfing class, which sees us matched up against Mbappe's PSG. Now the first task we have to tackle here, it's the DFB Pokal. And RB Leipzig are coming in hot. Just look at this team. Pender and Wahi up top. Michael Elise, Zer Emery in midfield. They're an intimidating hidden gem outfit and I'm not taking them lightly here as it's our strongest first team starting 11 to go out and do battle. 10 academy icons, one real life talent leading the way and we're quick sim into glory baby. We clutch up and get a 2-1 victory. It was a nail biting finish in Berlin but Meyer off the bench won the score sheet and then to get things kicked off it was Lang to open it up at the 21st minute. Elise's equalizer kept it close but in an all out dominating display there was only deserving to be one winner. Oh my days damn we definitely sweated that one out. One down one to go. Now here's the coup de grace the pinnacle of club world football but before we jump into tonight's blockbuster clash well it has been suspended. There's always a catch. That's going to be a huge loss for our hopes but let's take a look at all the numbers and all the stats that went down throughout the simulation. We have Liam Lang who was just guaranteed goals from us from the get go. Where would we be without this man? All six foot five of him up front isn't just an absolute handful for defenders around the world. 44 goals, 4 assists, that's one of his best seasons yet and with offensive wingers like Kadil Yilmaz and Johannes Bender around him, they're creating chances, they're getting forward, creative attacking plays. 18 goals and 3 for the young Turk and then Johannes Bender 16 goals and 20, those are elite numbers and he's peaked so far. Our bold 20 year old who has attracted attention from a lot of big European clubs, Lenny Schneider off the bench, proving to be one of the favoured centre forwards compared to his brother Leo. That was a plot twist I didn't see coming. The Schneider brothers battling it out for the up front spot next to Lang, but it's Asan. He's had the captain's armband since day one and another 10 goals and 20 assists. It's Mr. Consistent who can do it both in attack and Keke top off the bench with 11 goals. We've got the suspended man out for tonight, Osman Bullet with 6 and 8. And then someone who's impressed me the most throughout this entire video, the South American Youth Academy diamond Igor Borges. Four goals and 20 assists. That's right, 20 from CDM. An absolute G unit. And something else I didn't expect was the defender to be our highest rated player, Danny Rayner. Three goals and three assists. Nearly maxed out at a perfect 99 rating. I don't think I've ever seen a defender hit those heights. I've seen attackers definitely do it. But a centre back, that is just different gravy, son. These are the kind of hot shots we're dealing with as Javier Roman will get the start tonight. The Bolivian going out there to prove a point. We've got weapons off the bench to bring on. And one of the best goal keepers world football has ever seen Eduardo Yaramillo. I haven't even given him too much of the spotlight throughout the rebuild but yeah I'm here to give him his props. 95 rated shot stop but only 23. 28 clean sheets which you don't see every day. We are witnessing a god tier squad with the highest valued player. He's nearly three quarters of a way to a billion and just look how many players not only are in the 100 million squad but the 200 million gang. This is an absolute joke. My jaw is on the floor but it's all gonna mean nothing if we can't over take PSG tonight and show them who's boss. We're going to plug in our day one Roman. The rest of them keep their starting spots, but here is how PSG are lining up with Mbappe, Kanganli, and Usman Dembele leading the line up front. Javi Simmons and Havertz running the show in midfield. Another questionable decision in a big dance. Fabian Ruiz at centre back. A couple of youth academy gems in the mix and then Donnarumma in between the sticks. Enough with the chit chat. Let's get it people. We're here to perform and at the Olympic Stadion it's going to be on home turf baby. In the German capital, it would be a shame if Mourinho fumbled the bag right here. The Royal Blues are out on a mission, done completing side quests for the quadruple, for the treble. It all comes down to this. Oh, he's burned our defender there. And Kangen Lee is going to cut back inside. We've got players back in Usman Dembele. Bleak block. And we keep fighting for possession as Lang cuts back. Schneider. Oh, Drago at the box. First set piece of the night. Borges whips it in. And at the near post. Donnarumma had to think fast. And already we're seeing trouble unfold with Usman Dembele. The connection with Mbappe. He's going to take the shot. Kilian, what a save from Yaramillo. And now back inside. It is a fully fledged all action. This is Dembele. But we've given it straight 
to the path of Mbappe. Now one on one with Yaramillo. He didn't decide to pull the trigger. And look who's free on the right. It's Yilmaz who can find a perfect delivery inside to Lange the back stick. And it's going to be called for offside. Oh, it was the perfect sweeping move. But the homegrown talent was literally half a boot offside. He was a little bit too urgent. Ah, false alarm, boys. False alarm. Gavardi Olds pushed up forward from left back. And that's a nice little cross. What a block from Choi. A guaranteed goal right there. But our big Korean at the back intervened just in time. Oh, ball over the top. Gavardi Ol involved in the attack again. Now Mbappe. This time it's Roman with the block. Kangen Lee cut back to Mbappe. But Yadamillo got down low. And I still can't believe it's nil-nil. That has been one of the most hectic Champions League finals I've played so far. Yet it is still nil-nil. It has just been back and forth, back and forth. The wrong skill move. But we've still managed to find him. Lang Schneider there for the shot. And again, we force that out for another corner. Not turned into a goal. I'll never understand. But we've got Roman on the edge of the area. The pavilion. We're limiting PSG's attack and prowess. And look at how they're playing. They're just keeping hold of the ball. They do not care whatsoever to go forward. It's like they're forcing it into extra time. Big tackle, Maya. And can we spring forward a counter-attack? Lang on the inside finds Hassan, club captain. And now Bender back on the inside. Oedrabago can find a little gap. And now a shot from Yilmaz to win it. And he hits the wrong post. And that would have been the last play, the last shot of the game. But the Turk fires wide. And now we're forcing it into extra time. And potentially even pens to decide it. I'm not going to say it's been boring. But it has been just a tactical battle. And we're going to have to make some changes. Because our defense is absolutely tired as all hell right now. We're going to bring on Montero. Lang's on a yellow card and has been quite sloppy up front so toppy will take his place schneider does not feel like a 99 pace player but that's a story for another day bring on extra time people this is going to go down to the wire the psg even want to play football they're just passing it around the back and finally our pressure has paid off borges Ball over the top. Surely Fabian can't get there. We win the race somehow. Needs to find the delivery. Fabian's on his case. And Hassan. Ball on the outside. Roman into the path of Yildiz again. Donnarumma with the big save. Is there time? And no. It's going to go to spot kicks, man. Like... <laughs> Oh my god, the boys have got synchronized stretches going on. You love to see the team bonding, the team chemistry is on point. And PSG look pretty confident about things, so let's get this underway with Kylian Mbappe. Can we save him? Straight up Yadamilu! Oh my god, we might have a chance. And now Borges, for some reason, is our first penalty taker. And let's find out why the Brazilian goes left and Donnarumma matches, of course. Kai Havertz now. Oh, he goes right. He's been terrible all game. But we need him to come through with the goods. And he's going to slot it away. Donnarumma didn't move. Where is he going to place it? Let's go for the right-hand side. And our Colombian hero again gets a paw to it. And now it's Bender, the offender. Fabian Ruiz, he's gone for power. And he's sent us the wrong way. Oh, boy. This is going to be a pressure penalty from day one. He needs to get this right. And he's not going to. And now this is the moment for Yosko. Gavardiol and big save. Yadamillo's kept us in it and we need to score this. Otherwise, it's all over Red Rover. I know you haven't been the favoured striker, but we need you to produce... I aimed right. I aimed right and you went down the middle, you stupid idiot. Can't do this. No, can't do this. I don't even know why I play this fucking game anymore, man. Fuck it. We're doing one more season for the culture, and this time, we're gonna win it all, don't worry. Use this as motivation for season seven, all right? I don't think it was our time yet. Even though I was about to throw my PC out the window after that Champions League final, I just seemed straight up to the end of the season, and the boys have done it. They've made their way into the big dance again, up against two-time champs, Inter. Well, I guess two times in this video, so yeah, three-time champs, Inter, after topping their group, being perfect in an easy group. They demolished Gank 6-0 on aggregate in the quarter, went past Newcastle 5-3 and secured a 3-1 ag scoreline against Man United to make this all possible in June 2030. Is it lucky season 7? We're just going to have to wait and see after the treble last year and falling short at the end. They were also falling short in the Bundesliga from being invincible. One loss all season and only nine goals conceded. They are three-time back-to-back-to-back champs. Bayern are nowhere to be seen down in ninth, but there is no one contending. We've just made Germany 
a Farmers League. That's how good these talents are. And the DFB Pokal couldn't go all the way and defend their crown. Unfortunately, losing out to round three, which just seems to be a curse for us. And in the Super Cup, took it home 3-1 against Leverkusen. So there is a chance for a treble tonight. Our best defender, Reina, is suspended for tonight. So Montero takes his place. There's always something setting us back. For all but one player, it is a full strength starting 11. Looking to take on the Neda Zuri with the likes of Jonathan David, Lautaro Martinez still kicking it up front. Gavi Bastoni as captain at sweeper. Mason Mount, Aslani, and an aging Luis Diaz. Considering my luck in the past couple of rebuilds has just been terrible. It has been piss poor. I'm giving this one over to the assistant manager. We're quick simming this one at the San Siro. And the Interisti stand in our way. I can't even watch. We're quick simming it. All right, now we finally can sim this match. And it's a 2-0 win. Okay, we got the job done nice and comfortably. No last minute shenanigans. Both Schneider and Lang on the score sheet up front. And Borges even missed a penalty. That's how much we were all over them. 16 shots, 67% possession. This team can claim the ring and get the holy grail they deserve. Finally, the Youth Academy rebuild is complete because goddamn that penalty shootout would be the death of me. Securing the treble back to back, a hat trick of Bundesliga titles, and a Youth Academy with unlimited power. If you guys have any other rebuild challenges or suggestions I should do with the Youth Academy, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm open to all your suggestions. Follow me on all my socials. Links will be down in the description and I promise a lot more videos are coming on the way. I've been hella inconsistent. My PC has just died on me a couple of times. So hopefully, fingers crossed, before I leave for Europe, I'll, I'll get a good batch of content out for you guys and then uh, we'll be on that travel arc. We'll be on the vlogs. Going to matches in Europe, it is going to be hectic. As for now though, I've been your boy Sir BCHD. Take care, have a great day and I'll catch you all on the very next video. Bye-bye.